the name of the season is Finland on, on the edge. Uh, do you know, do you happen to notice this uh, famous song, Man on the Edge? It was published by Iron Maiden 1995. Uh, it was based on this movie, movie Falling Down, Rankka Päivä in Finnish, uh, where Michael Douglas, Douglas is fooling around in, in a hot city and trying to do something for his future. But maybe over here this on the edge exactly means on the edge of the future. And actually we will start from the future because the first session is is given by a genuine futurist Nico Herlin from FinPro and then the, the two second uh, su successive presentations they in a way are dealing with the means to get to the future. But the first of them First one is on, on uh, the transformation of processes towards uh, HL and lean future. It will be given by Jari Partanen ja Järvinen. So Kirsi Vikkonen was not able to at attend and, and uh, Jani is re replacing Arto Saari. And then the last uh, uh, talk is given by Carl Whiteman and it's on, on uh, let's say the business means was the future. So let's start and Nico, please. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, so my name is Nico Herlin and I, I am a futurist, my stake already introduced me. And um, as a futurist, it's hard for me to just stand behind the podium. So I'm gonna stand here a little bit freely and, and, and talk. And I also encourage you to, to ask or comment in the middle of the presentation. So don't wait until the end, but do ask me at any time or comment. So I might just give this to Tia if she if she's listening. You can be in charge of the of the the, the queue. <coughs> okay, as a futurist, of course, I have a little bit of a different uh, point of view in, in, in the whole thing. I'm not an engineer. Uh, I do know things about IT. That's not my specialty. Uh, I'm more of a generalist, so 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 excuse me for for some uh, wrong uh, technical uh, words or or, or so. Uh, that is all I, I I wanted to say about my background. The presentation uh, I've built it uh, or or consists of, of of a few three maybe main uh, uh, parts. First, I'm going to talk just briefly, really shortly about FinPro, what FinPro is. Then I will talk about the future or, or foresight, uh, a little bit what we think about uh, foresight, what it is, and, and just as a background to, to, to you. Then I'm going to just take you on a journey, let's say firework of, of, of ideas, uh, signals, um, one view of, of what, the, what the future, or ideas of, of what the future might look like. Uh, these do not per se, uh, talk about the cloud, uh, but, but uh, uh, still I hope you can find, find uh, issues there and, and make your own conclusions. That is the, the, the main point in it. Briefly, like I said, FinPro, the organization I'm, I'm from, uh, is a, is a non-profit organization. We are half, uh, partly funded by, by the government, uh, and what we do is we help Finnish companies to succeed uh, internationally. Um, we do that, uh, mostly we, we help companies uh, establish, to, to establish uh, uh, subsidiaries or go abroad, but what we also do, and my role there, is, is foresight. So we try to help companies also to understand the vari variety of futures and see that there are different options uh, when looking, looking ahead. Um, the point in, in, in this slide uh, which talks about the foresight mission, this is something I, I just want to highlight why, we, why you should do or why anyone should do foresight. Why it's good to look at the future or should I say look at the futures like, like Jim Dater, uh, a known futurist, says. He says that you should actually never talk about the future because it's very misleading. Uh, nobody can predict the future. Uh, not, I mean, not even me, even if I do that as a job, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professional futurist. 
so so the, the, the only thing I can do is, 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 is to do best educated guesses. That's usually what I, I call them. Um, the point still, I mean, I, don't, I mean it, it might be really interesting if you just look at what's possible, what might happen. It's really exciting, it's, it's fun, but there is a serious point in, in, in doing futures work. And that's actually to transform those interesting things that you can see in the future into actions today. I strongly believe that, that we can affect the future, uh, not entirely, but to some extent we we are in, in, in charge of what will happen in the future. So our actions today do define the future to some extent. So that's why I, I underline the acting. So, so, so from all the ideas that, that I show here as well, maybe you can find some inspiration, some idea, and, and, and act upon it. Um, I have a few... I call them theoretical slides. I know it's very dangerous to, to use that word when you have uh, people from the academia present, <coughs> but these are uh, theoretical in, in my view. Uh, so uh, just to, to, to illustrate the way, the method that, that, that I see in foresight. Um, the way that we do it, uh, <coughs> we collect weak signals around the world. Teampro has a broad network of offices. We have 350 people working for us. Um, and we just observe what is happening. So that's the basis of foresight. We use the observations of today. What we do in that is creating different options. Uh, you can call them scenarios, you can call them stories, but creating different options. That's also what I'm going to be doing later on in this presentation. I'm going to show you a few options, a few ideas. Um, that's the fun part of foresight, like I said. The hard part actually comes from making choices, because you have an unlimited number of choices when looking at the future, good and bad. And mind you, I'd, I'd like to emphasize those only uh, when looking at the future, focus on those opportunities and the, the, the utopian visions that you might have. It's also very, very useful, not that fun though, but, but still to look at those disasters, the disastrous future for you or for your company. It's, it's very healthy to also think about those options so you know what to avoid. Uh, anyway, you, you need to make choices and choose a few things and based on them, you might then find those really good aha, those inspirations. I usually call this, I mean, in Finnish there's a, an excellent word for this, and that's oivallus. That is what, what I hope you, you, you will get out of this. Uh, with oivallus, in, in, in English it would be an inspiration, uh, or, or, or I've even heard the word epiphany, so you get that aha uh, of, 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 of from something uh, in, in, in this. Um, this is interesting because I just when I when I heard Jan, listen to Jan here in, in, in the beginning uh, today, uh, this is very similar to, to 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 that approach. But the point being that when you look at the future, you should not only look at it from a very uh, uh, narrow uh, point of view, but try to do it uh, very holistically. So what we use very much is 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 not a triangle, but but three different circles. Which, uh, which talk about uh, the technology, the technological part, uh, talk about the business model, and, 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 uh, and uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, the, the, the business perspective, but most importantly, I would say, is the customer experience, the, the human part of this. And um, we add, add a few questions to this, and I think these questions are the most rel uh, relevant thing. Uh, because tech, th that technology part, it actually answers to the question, what is possible? Um, you guys here are expert in this, and, and many of you look at, and, and we heard even in, in the first presentation uh, uh, today, we heard about the, the, the technological foresight or, or forecasting, what kind of technologies uh, are related to, to, to the cloud or, or IT. Um, so that's one point. Uh, of course, looking at the business models or business, business part, that, that answers the question, what's profitable? Uh, and then 
the, 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 the very important one, and, and I think this is, especially from a Finnish perspective, something that we don't do too much here, is to look at the what's desirable. What is it that the customers really crave for? What do they burn for? What do they want? Uh, so that's very important. And actually the phenomena that I'm gonna uh, present to you just in a, in, a, in a second are mostly based on what comes from, from the soft part, so what's desirable. What kind of value, feeling uh, do I see or think that, 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 that drives uh, things in the future? Um, to illustrate this, this example, I, I, I can just say, say, say what, what, take one example. Uh, looking at the future, because uh, if you only look at the technological part, trust me, you would get very scared. Because that, that's a very scary thing to see if you only think about what's possible to do. One example is, and this is already from, from almost a year ago, I, I inten attended a, a conference, the World Future Society conference, uh, a room full of futurists and looking very far ahead. But there was this guy talking seriously about a project that's all, already going on, where they want to transform the human memory, the human mind into ones and zeros and eventually on a memory chip. So the idea is to really just take what's up here and put it on a stick so that you could give it on to the future generations. Of course, this is, uh, this is uh, 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 assuming that we will die, which of course, according to Ray Kurzweil after 2045, will not occur because we are immortal uh, due to this, this, uh, this um, uh, the, the, the singularity. Let's not go there, but, 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 but still. Uh, let's assume that we will die. Um, so we would want our memories to, to, to go on to our children and grandchildren. So we would put that on a memory chip. Like I said, this is already very far. This guy stand, stood there very seriously explaining how that can be, be done. The only bad thing is that you need to kill yourself first. Uh, then you inject uh, some kind of, of substance that Will, will, will stop the, the, the proteins from breaking down in your brain. Then you, you, I suppose, you freeze the brain and you slice it really, really, really thin. And then from those neurons and the synapses, and, and well, I'm not a medical doctor, as you, as you understand, but still, you, 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 you somehow can transfer that into ones and zeros. So then you would just download it on a stick, and then there you are, on a stick. And the scary thing here, you, you actually have a lot of people in line for this service. So, I mean, there are volunteers who have said that, yes, I want to be part of this. They are now doing it on m mice and rats, uh, and humans are just the next step. They are advertising this as a cheaper method uh, compared to the uh, cyrogenics, which is the, the freezing the whole body or freezing your brain, like Walt Disney did. Um, but so, yeah. oh, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit lost in this, this whole, whole topic, but, but the only thing I want to say here, looking at, at just the technological possibilities, it, it, it does sound kind of scary. So, so, so you do need to think about other perspectives, and here the, 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 the customer ex uh, experience or, or the, the values actually act as some kind of a break, because mm, it's maybe not that nice to do, especially in, 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 as, a, as a European uh, idea. There are also uh, many cultural differences in these. So, so all Americans actually get very excited when, when talking about immortality and, and, and this transfer of, of, of your ideas, uh, where that, whereas Europeans are, are not that uh, enthusiastic. Uh, anyway, so the point being, do try to look at it from different angles, and I know many here do technological forecasting, so, so in that sense I'm going to more concentrate on the desirability or values of, 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 uh, of consumers or, or people. And these are the topics that I'm going to talk about. So I have these three uh, phenomena, three larger ideas that I'm going to then support with, with some signals, signals from today that we can already see now happening. 
So, first of all, forget privacy. I know we've heard about privacy here uh, a few times, and now I'm saying maybe the opposite. Uh, we've heard that, that privacy is an important issue, and it's something that we really need to consider. Um, I'm saying we don't, especially when it comes to uh, consumer data, consumer uh, behavior. What you can actually see is, I mean, there's a lot of information is collected all the time from what we uh, submit, but also kind of uh, automatically, uh, uh, there's a lot of, of information collected about us. Um, the future really looks very much like the minority report. I don't know how many of you have seen the picture uh, the, or the movie, but that is really where we are going, I think. So I don't, in the minority report, the idea there is that there's actually this cop who, 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 um, who can, who, who gets uh, an announcement when someone is thinking about murder, and then he can go and arrest him before he actually does it, because you, we, we, all, we can anticipate what people think. Uh, so, so this is where we're going, especially looking at the consumer market, true individualization, uh, not something that is uh, done for my kind of consumers or my kind of people, but something that is really for me. Uh, I am willing to give up all my privacy. I don't care if, if the, 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 the source, if, if, if companies know everything about me, because everybody knows everything about everyone. So in that sense, I mean privacy is no issue. However, trust is important. So there's n a fine line between these things. So, so misuse of that information is not accepted in any way, but using the information to provide you with something that you want or that you actually don't know that you want yet, but you realize that you want once you get it, uh, that's okay, uh, but, but not to misuse that, that trust. Um, as an uh, illustration of, 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 of this, there, there, there was a survey uh, done by, by IBM, where 75% of, of consumers say that they actually do accept that retailers know things about them. Um, if we just stop for one second and think about ourselves, that's, by the way, one of the best tools in doing foresight, and, and especially when thinking about what do those consumers want is to just take a mirror in your hand and ask yourself the question, because you are one as well. Anyway, taking that mirror now uh, and asking, how many of us own a, a plus a corti? That's a, 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 a loyal customer card for one, one of the, the, the supermarket chains. Actually, there are 3.7 million cards. This is according to Tesco. Uh, and they say that 2.2 million households have this card. According to the Finnish Statistical Bureau, there are 2.5 million households, leaving only 300,000 households outside. So actually they know basically any, everything about us, but stupidly of them, they actually proudly say that they don't use the information. Well, they actually have the information, maybe they will someday. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not very impressed when I get home uh, uh, an ad from my local Kmart, just because they know that, I, that that's where I live. The, that's the only information they, they say. I would like to have very specific, uh, for instance, rebates or, or yes. And as I'm now Nico doing what you wished, so if I may add on that one, we had an interesting discussion because in particular these loyalty cards, whether they be K or S, these two big uh, supermarket branches, that um, uh, the, uh, the thing that actually in open data movement, uh, if we as consumers all ask, we have the right to ask all data for us. You know, I, uh, because that, if you look what is printed there in small, mm -hmm. and what if we, I mean, if the big, big chains don't understand what to do with the big data. So, so how about open the data, of course, anonymously, 
and both tutti, tutti, tutti those entrepreneurs and those who are eager to do some, some stuff about it. Especially if they are if they are claiming, I don't think they are hopefully not anymore claiming that they are proud of not being utilized. And there is an initiative in Finland, I know a couple of people who are working in working on this now, especially okay. because the S group is constructing in more also Cooperative. Cooperative. Uh, cooperative. So it really means that anybody who has the other card you are part of the cooperative. So then it's even more powerful. Sure. So just play the play the game, yeah. uh, play the game and think think what you could do if they empower this data yeah. for for us uh, innovative persons yep. to play play with it. Yeah. Actually one good example. I don't have a, a signal of it but, but I can just share the story very shortly. Um, some of you might be familiar with it, but but uh, the, the chemist uh, retailer Target in the US. Uh, they have something called the pregnancy index. Uh, so what they do is they calculate based on what you buy, if, if you use their loyalty card, they actually have a huge amount of data and then they can, they can predict whether you're pregnant or not. So what happened actually, th this is already maybe, might be a year ago, uh, a 16 year old girl got a letter home saying congratulations, you're pregnant. Uh, her father opened the letter and, and, and he got quite upset. Uh, when, when, when reading that the, the, the letter and, and, and went back there. Here you actually see how, how it's becoming more, more popular and people are wanting it more, but currently there are still doubts. But in this case, anyway, the, 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 the father went to, to, to Target saying that, how very dare you, my, my, my daughter, she's just 16 years old. I mean, how can you suggest this kind of thing? And, and, and they, were, they were already advertising diapers and, and solids and everything for, or for, 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 for this daughter. Um, well, it turned out uh, a few months <laughs> after receiving the letter that the stomach started growing and, and well, she was pregnant. So, so, so they did anticipate it before even she knew herself. Uh, so th th this is, all, this is a, a, a live example from, from what's already happened. Um, let's go to, to, to just uh, some signals and, and ideas, go a little bit back, but, 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 but things that support this, this, this statement that, that, that privacy uh, can and, 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 and should be forgotten. Um, I just love this picture and that's why I, I, I showed it. This is just to, to illustrate how much we all share all the time. I mean, you've taken a lot of pictures here now, there's the tweet going on, everyone already knows what's going on here. And this picture just shows the, 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 the rapid change. Uh, the, the picture is, you have two pictures, they're both taken from St. Uh, from, from, um, Peter's Square in, in, in the Vatican. Uh, from 2005, you can actually see one mobile phone there uh, on the, the, the lower right uh, corner. There's someone taking a picture. Uh, and then the same event eight years later and everyone is sharing. So this is just a recent picture from, from, from when, when, when the new Pope was elected and, and, and he appeared on, on, on the balcony. So in just a few years you see everyone is sharing. And I just find it interesting, I mean, that, that, that the, the amount of data that you just really feed in into the system, the cloud or, or somewhere is, is, is huge. Because actually 12 years of content is uploaded into YouTube every day. 12 years worth of video is uploaded every day. To me, that's quite a lot. <clears throat> okay, so you already now have these services that try to, to anticipate what we are doing. Uh, you have the Google Now app. Uh, this is actually for Android phones. Uh, what happens is that, that, that uh, it, it, it gives, shows you these different cards based on where you are. So when you wake up in the morning, it will show you today's weather forecast. Um, it knows where you work, so before you leave to work, it will show you the card showing the traffic for today, for your route, so that you can change routes if you need to. If you go to the train station, it actually automatically, using, you, using GPS, Wi-Fi and, and, and different technologies, it knows where you are, you, you go to the train station, it will immediately display the, 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 the timetable for all trains coming to that station. So this 
just shows you relevant cards for wherever you go. So, so, so you get uh, uh, information. There's one service which is, goes a little bit further uh, uh, called, uh, called SADA, uh, launched in July uh, 2012. This one also, uh, it, it, it measures where you are, uh, how long you, how, how much time you spend there. So if you go to a cafe, it knows you are there, it knows how long you're there, it knows what museums you go to, it, it, it kind of learns to know you. And then it starts suggesting to you, well, hey, you always go to that same cafe here. There's actually a very nice cafe two blocks away. Why don't you try that one? So it starts predicting and telling you uh, some new things that you might like. Uh, there's some other solutions. This one was for the iPad, MindMeld, which actually listens to a phone call. It listens to what you, it, it, it uses voice recognition to understand what you're talking about. So if you call someone and, and, and talk to, to the person about, okay, uh, let's go for, for Italian food, and well, do you know any nice places close to there and there? It understands Italian food, it understands the addresses, the areas you're talking about, and plop, 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 it starts suggesting, showing things uh, what you're talking about. If you change subject, it will just change and start showing things uh, based on, on what you're talking about. So it, you, do, you don't need to, to put in, or you can put in and, and tell it to, to look for something specific, but otherwise it just analyzes what you're saying and, and assumes uh, to, to understand what you want. Recognition can also be done differently and in different forms. Uh, there are many, uh, this kind of things, I, I, I like this, this, uh, this uh, the, the use of this. Uh, it's, um, it's the Plan UK, uh, the Plan, this, this uh, aid, uh, I don't know what it's called, uh, the, the, the aid, it's not an agency, but, but a welfare thing, uh, where they want to help women in, 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 in different, for instance, in this project, they want to help women and, and young girls in, in specific areas. The point with this commercial is, if you go and stand in front of it, there, there's a video displaying. If you go and look at it, if you're a woman, it will play you the video. If you are a man, it will just say, you're not allowed to see the video, please go to our website. So what they want to do is raise awareness that, that there's a lot of things that women are not allowed to do in these countries. So if you're a man, just, sorry, you just can't. So, so the, trying to get men to understand what it might feel like. So it uses recognition of, of, of your facial structure to understand whether you're a man or a woman. Uh, not that difficult. There are other autom uh, automatic things that actually also look at the whole body to, to, to do some, some uh, give some dietary su suggestions, for instance. There are, are things like this in, in, in supermarkets. Um, another thing, and, and this goes also, I think, quite close to the privacy issues. Um, they are already installed in 30, there are 37 of these kiosks in, in different malls in, in the US. The point with this Neality is that you go and stand inside it, it will make a complete measurement of you. It uses 200,000 different points and, and, and really knows exactly your body. So it's, it's a body scanner. Uh, what it does afterwards, it prints you out your, your information, <coughs> and all the information based on the shops in that supermarket, saying that if you go to the Nike store, this is your size. Uh, if you go to the other store, don't buy those narrow shoes, but buy, buy those larger because, because your feet are a bit big. So it actually measures you completely and gives you uh, this information. This information is also up, the uploaded into a database so that they can use this for health purposes uh, when, 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 well, I don't know what they might do with the information, but people do want to give that and, and, and find this really, really uh, useful. Where we're going, of course, and, and, and it's not, nothing new with the emotive uh, sensors, but, 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 but still we are going into brain-computer interfaces, we're going into mind reading and telepathy in, in, to, to some extent. Um, I mean, you can already now play simple games uh, on an iPhone, uh, just thinking. So you, you use this, this helmet with the, 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 the sensors that, that, that they, they sense your, your brain waves, 
and if you think up, it, it will, there's this simple ping pong thing. So, so if you think up, it will go up, and it, you can play this simple game with only your mind. So we are not that far, really, from real telepathy and, and using all that information. So what I'm trying to say is, forget about privacy, because we are sharing already everything, and, and, and uh, this is something that, that, that surely is, is, is coming. Any comments at this point? Are you scared? Intrigued? <laughs> There's one comment there. Pia, can you throw the, the, yep. the catch box, please? I can't throw. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that was good. <laughs> uh, so we should train a bit more of that. <laughs> it could be really good. So uh, to challenge you a bit here, say that privacy will go. But I think privacy in itself is a quite, in hist historically, it's a quite modern concept. Mm -hmm. And it comes maybe out of uh, noble classes and so on that have the power and possibility to take things, pri do things in mm -hmm. privacy and be insulted, have the yeah. uh, uh, possibility to claim that they get insulted and so on. So if we now uh, move backwards here and uh, come back to a time where, and, and then this privacy entered into something that we all, it become a general concept mm. for us in society. So if you now say we, we uh, move backwards here and give up this fine thing of privacy that we have enjoyed so much, <coughs> uh, what will be the new noble classes? What will they do? Will they go to privacy again? Or uh, <laughs> what, what will be there? That's a very interesting thought, worth thinking of what, what then? And like, like, I mean, I think you touched on, on a very, very important issue, which is that, that I have a statement which is very black and white, of course. You're saying that forget privacy. Uh, there's always another side of the co coin, so there might be something completely different. So this is just one point of view. Um, I don't have an answer to you, no. but of course I can just imagine and, and try to come up with one, but, but, but that's, that's, that's very interesting to think. What is it then? That, that, that would be the new, new thing. A very good point. Um, nonership uh, is another issue uh, which comes from the word no ownership. Uh, saying that we're really going into these this paper use uh, models. Uh, there's a lot of this already now, but I see this is, this is, this is getting, getting really common and, and it's, it's worth thinking of uh, even more what it really means for every single uh, 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 product um, or, or, or service. So it's not so much about doing things, it's more about, uh, so sorry, it's not so much about owning things, but really doing and having access. So, so some call about, talk about this uh, as, as accessorship. Um, there is actually, uh, it, 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 this is interesting because there are different aspects. You can see that as a statement, really to be kind of, to, 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 to do this as, as, a, as a statement, to, to not to own things. But there's also some, a, a bit of, of new bohemianism in this whole thing, because also the idea of saving the, 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 the nature, being, being sustainable, uh, plays a role in this but also very much about status. So it's not only those green guys that, that go into, into renting and not own. There's also another thing that you might, might uh, think or, or worth considering. Uh, if going into to that direction and, and actually people being more, less reliable on something solid uh, and, and owning things, uh, we don't need that much money. I mean, uh, now, now we need to work because we all have mortgages and, 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 and we're married to the bank for 40 years and we just need to pay off that mortgage. What if we don't have that? We can stop working for two months if we want to because it's not so, I mean, we're not so fixed in, in, in what we do. So there might be less money around or, or then not, but, but just a thing to, 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 to consider. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting fact. 10% uh, is not maybe that much, but still, already by 2016, which is in, in a few years, uh, uh, the idea is that 10% of, of especially urban citizens 
will have this mobility as a service uh, taken very seriously, uh, especially what comes to, to vehicle ownership. There, there, there are, of course, examples of it. Um, rental boom, I don't know if, if, if you can call really it a boom right now, but it's, it's going a little bit up and down, but still there's a general uh, change in, in, in the, the mentality that it's okay to rent, you don't really need to own. Actually owning is, is, is worse because, because you're stuck to something. Uh, if, if you rent and you're, 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 you're free to, to, to do, do things uh, in your own way, so it's, it's a little bit about, about, about doing things your, your, your way, uh, not, not being forced to do things. Uh, the sharing economy, there's a lot about that, uh, that uh, it's, th there's nothing you cannot share. There's nothing you just cannot rent, uh, uh, that, that you cannot rent or, uh, from a company or from people to people. And it's interesting that actually uh, 3.5 billion is the estimation this year of, of the business that people gain from renting their own things that they have. So if you actually happen to own something, you really rent it out to others uh, while you don't need it. There's Airbnb, there's Zipcar, there's, uh, there was something called Parking Panda, where you can actually rent your own driveway for people to park in. Uh, which might be, especially in the Helsinki area, I don't know how many of you read, they, they're gonna increase the, 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 the city parking fee, uh, was it tenfold? So, so that's a good business idea for anyone owning some small space uh, in Helsinki. So, so consider that uh, a very, might be a very good idea. You can, you can rent a BMW per minute. Uh, this is in, in, in Germany, in the bigger cities in Germany. In the US uh, it works as well. Um, you just hop in the car and you pay 27 uh, cents per minute that you drive the car. When you stop it, you can actually reserve it for you for a little bit of a lower fee, but still you ch you're, you're just charged for the time that you use the car. Um, also, uh, buying books uh, online is, is passé, that's the old thing. The, the newer thing is that you pay per page that you read. If you just flip through the pages quickly, you don't pay anything. If you stay on the page for a while, then you need to pay. So you're charged per page that you read. Um, this is a, 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 a actually a, a Israel-based uh, based, uh, application. Um, of course, uh, also renting, for instance, a mobile phone. This is something that almost all of us already now uh, encounter when you go abroad and you have those huge roaming costs when you, when you go somewhere. I mean, I, I, I once came back from, from the US with an 800 euro uh, phone bill just because I, I used a little bit of Facebook and, and, and sent a few emails worth 600 euros. So uh, it was kind of a surprise. So it would be cheaper to just rent a mobile phone for the time I'm there. In, in Hong Kong, it costs uh, around $9 to, to rent it for one day, and that's uh, unlimited data and, 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 and domestic calls included. Uh, how are we on time? Okay. Excellent, excellent. So I'm going to take the last, uh, last of, of, of my phenomena, which is called like a virgin. Now the title might ring you one bell, and then you look at the picture, it doesn't really maybe <coughs> correspond, but still uh, she might be a virgin consumer. Uh, and the idea here is actually, it's talking about the experience economy 2.0. Uh, so experience prior prioritization, uh, experience surprise every day, all the time. So consider your clients as virgins every day. You actually, they're, they're talking about endless first times on a daily basis. So that's what we want. We, 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 would, we don't want to be stuck with the same thing, but we do want all the time, we want new things. I don't see this changing, at least in a very near future. Uh, having said this, there's always a place for these, these very known brands, that, that, that heritage brands that will remain the same and it's, 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 it's status to, to, to own something like that. But, but really not to think uh, uh, here like, like, like an engineer and, and only think about the technology, but really 
focus on the experience that one gets from, from using the service or the, 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 the product. So I, 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 I suggest everyone to, to have a virgin mindset. Any, any company should have a virgin mindset, thinking about what can you do uh, in, in, in that uh, context. Uh, there are very simple, um, uh, simple guidelines for it. I mean, it, it, first of all, I mean, keep it simple. Don't make it very complicated. The, the service cannot be too difficult. Uh, also, you have to explain. You have. It, it needs to be very. You need to know what you're getting. Uh, so, so that's something that that's very in, in, in making something new all the time. You need to explain uh, uh, to to the consumer. Uh, in a very understandable way what they are getting. And don't ask for commitment. That's, that's one of the, the, the main, main uh, outtakes from there. Um, just some statistic or one figure. Uh, it's quite a lot if you think almost 20,000 apps every month uh, just on, on Apple's App Store. So that tells about, about really, uh, really uh, a fast pace. Then also regarding to this, uh, another interesting thing uh, from, from last year, there were 18,000 projects uh, successfully funded uh, or crowdfunded in Kickstarter. That talks about, I'm not, we, we could have a whole phenomenon on that, but, but talks about uh, how these virgins want status from participating, really having a meaning to it. So they want to fund something which actually makes them committed to the thing. Uh, a few examples, I, I just have five uh, signals here. Something you might have seen, the Nest, which is a thermostat uh, developed actually by two guys leaving, who, who left uh, Apple. They, they were there uh, designing the iPod and, and, and iPhone. They thought, why do all thermostats look so darn ugly? Uh, this more based in, in, in the US, in, in Finland, we have a little bit of a different cleaning system. But this is an intelligent, uh, thermostat on the wall that actually also learns and understands when you're home, when you're leaving. You need to teach it a little bit what kind of temperatures you prefer, but then it starts uh, uh, utilizing that information. And while you're at work, it will it will lower the temperature, and then when you get home, it, it will we will put it up again. If I don't uh, if if I, if I don't remember this correctly, it was it was about three and a half million dollars that they have been able to save uh, in energy costs. Uh, per year, uh, so so it's it's quite a lot. Well, the virgins they like everything new and and all those pop ups. They are very uh, you, you've seen a lot of pop ups, uh, uh, especially in the restaurant business, but also shops and everything. So you just have a shop for a, a, a short while somewhere. This is actually from Finland, where the restaurant Muru went into the lo to the Lohja uh, mine and and had a, had a shop there uh, briefly. Well, a scene that we see every day. I wish I could only see a number three on my phone, but I usually see a, a double digit number every day on my phone. There are at least 10 updates every day on my phone uh, with all the apps that I have. Um, just uh, another, this, is, this, this just, uh, is, is kind of a genius example of on, on, on how to, to, to try to, to, to catch attention and, and, and make things interesting and, and, and nice. I like this idea, it's from Korea, uh, called My Refrigerator, where the, the, the supermarket uh, chain G25 actually uh, understood that if you have this, this promotion, buy two for the price of one, uh, as a single household, you can actually buy that set, but you don't need to take that second with you, you can leave it in a virtual refrigerator and then get it when you need it. So, or you can give it to a friend. So, so just um, one example of, of doing things differently. Uh, I'm going to end with this example, uh, which which uh, which uh, includes gamification, a, a, a completely other issue we could talk about, but also a genius example. This is something we all need to do every once in a while, and why not play a game while while you're at it? Uh, so so they have they have invented a, a urinal video game. There's also a version for women where you can sit down and, and use your, your, your hand as the input, but here uh, you use something different for, for, for the, 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 the uh, uh, so for the, Sorry. yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> That's all I have. Uh,
for my part in, 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 in the... In, um, okay, uh, let's give some applause to Nico. <laughs> so, many interesting th things in, in uh, many of the futures that we will have. Uh, anything to ask or comment? Uh, I would like to ask uh, how big is big enough thinking of this data that will be gathered from us and, and stored somewhere in Kayani or elsewhere and then maybe used for some purposes? How big is big enough? I don't future? see. It. I don't see there's any need. In it. Okay. <laughs> there, there really isn't. So so there's just more and more of, of this, and, and it all needs to be be analyzed and, and act upon at the same time. All right. Okay, thanks uh, again. And uh, let's now. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's soft, so you don't need to. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm kind of missing one important thing like cultures, China, India, Asia. Uh, Privacy and life being a virgin is very nice. Mm -hmm. or are, are very nice, but what about our like Western culture? As in, like in the future, feel like uh, we might lose something, lose the game, so to speak. Uh, Asia is gonna be like pushing our culture away mm -hmm. potentially. So we will perhaps see what we like. Our culture is like marginalized and stuff like that. Yes, I do think so too. So, any any ideas on, on that? I mean, culture has changed all the time. So, culture will change, continue to change. Uh, the culture that we have now is not the same that we had hundreds of years ago. If you look really far back, Asian culture, Chinese culture, what they were the dominant player. They will be. So, it's just been, yeah, it will be again. So, it's just a, a, a change. So, I mean, yeah, yes, the, the culture that we know now will not be the same tomorrow, and, and just in, in, in 20, 30, 40 years it's going to be very different, but that's just normal evolution or, or, or things, things going that way. So uh, we are, human beings are protect, we are protected with our nature, uh, and, and I think your comment reflects on that, uh, but, 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 but I just think we need to give it up and, and, and accept that, that Things change, and, and, and maybe it's not for the for, for the bad. We do, of course. I mean, during our lifetime, we will keep our own culture and ideas. But then we die, and then there are new people coming. Yeah, our children. Our children. Our children think differently. Their children gonna think differently. So I don't see it, it, it that much as a as a problem. It's just a sign of normal life. Is it Jari or Janne who will start? Okay, you both will start at the same time. Go ahead. Hello, from my side, I'm Jari Partanen coming from EB. I'm working as a, a head of quality and environment, but what I'm happy during all, all the past years, quite a lot has been the lean and Antar changes and di different kind of things. I have been working also with actually starting in, the, in our co cooperation as a few future uh, technologists responsible for future technologies. It was really nice to hear <laughs> the earlier stories. But also nowadays uh, working with strategies and things like that. And many times uh, there is revolutions and also evolutions. That was just my take for the earlier one. Yes, and thanks. So uh, our presentation today has been uh, developed together. Actually, it's connected to the cloud software. There has been one area which ha we have been working together. There has been a tremendous 
lost people, also some of the people participant here, also here contributing to different kind of issues which we call tales. Tales is the something which we want to kind of share with you today. And the idea for here is that we are kind of dealing different kind of things, why we and as such uh, changes are also necessary in connection to the cloud transformation. One thing is always, which is very important, is the motivation for the change. Why to start the changing? Why is there need? And in cloud economy, the change is coming from the business itself. You have to develop speed to go further and to be able to kind of react in that kind of environment. Then it's natural also think about that if we are changing where we should have an impact and this we have been looking on uh, from the customer perspective but also our, on our business perspective of these companies which have been participating together with research and academy. The next thing is always how to start the change what kind of things you should be considering when you are dealing with the change? What is your motivation? How you actually involved with the changes in different kind of organizational aspects and so on? Then one thing is always to recognize how we can think about that we are successful. What makes us successful as a company or what makes us successful in terms of internal uh, pressure for organization and also customer perspective? Then it's also enabled for the cultural change uh, because uh, making lean and agile is such a first step for being kind of in a uh, constant change and it also requires a cultural change in the environment you're actually executing these issues. And then it naturally involves both people and the teams. But you have to also change the products and your product portfolio. It's not ne uh, always that the people change, but you have to also think about what are your products, how you are actually going to think about those first. And it then goes ahead that you start to think about what kind of issues your product management should change, what kind of changes there should be made. And then going further, again, that how you actually share the information inside your company, how you share information also for your customers and also your collaborators who you are thinking of. It's also about the technology. You have to in kind of change many types of, types of things. For example, one area has been the continuous integration, which has been common for all of the companies who have been working here. <laughs> and it has, has impact also for the best strategy. For example, it used to be earlier that there was kind of uh, integration to weeks and now we are doing it at the best in minutes but in a small pieces or parts. Then you should think about how your pro products and services will evolve. It's not necessary it's necessary to think about this because actually when you are dealing you are able to release something much faster. It's also that how your products will be able to kind of hold and then how the customers are influencing your products itself. But then comes that how the leadership and practice start to evolve. What kind of issues you are having? For example, uh, we have been at EB looking for the kind of think about that how the continuous strategy could take place and budgeting. For example, uh, continuous planning has been one strength of execute. So we have a lot of different kind of aspects together for this. Then something but what has been changing has been that how we are dealing with the information. The processes and the information, how we are processing that has to be tied together. And then, but also something what has been done, some companies like Ericsson has been really good at how physical information of the work and the whole work in environment has been changed. So there's a lot of different kind of changes what has been done in the cloud sector. And we will share details about it. But Jari, you have done not said what, what, what is this hundred tables you're talking about? Are you gonna present hundred bullets here now? Or no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> hundred tables is about the lean and natural transformation. How we have been dealing with that. We are kind of get, uh, creating together something to be shared. It's called hundred tables. Yeah. And I also think it's, it's uh, 
notion of that, that there are no ready-made answers. Everything has to be uh, fitted into a context, and, and then only that will make sense to you. But here are some of our stories to you right now. And we will write these 100 tales by the end of this year as a result of, of the web and the results of the program. Yes. Then next, I will just briefly tell a little bit about the electrobit tales. There's few of those. I will share a little bit what we have been out and seeing as a results from those. We started actually to do this cloud, uh, for the cloud transparency and even as a part of that, but we started with the organized organization. We had earlier many more layers in our organization and that was something we started to change. It actually created an environment that our customer collaboration and the way of working with the customer started to change. And that was one of the first and initial issues. We started next to do a lot of things for the transparent enterprise. We call it transparent enterprise. How we are working together nowadays with our customers and our partners is that we have open environments for them. They are open in that way that everybody can see what we are doing and how we are doing. And for example, these teams can see each other's work. They can see what is the result of that and outcome. They can see what is the best result for it and so on. This has been something what we have been doing quite a lot during the last two years. There's still a lot of things to do. This is something which has been a great achievement for, for internally, but also that we are able to collaborate in a much better scale with, the, with, our, with our partners and our customers and of course. One thing which we have been setting quite much emphasis on still is how to share these issues with the, with the people. Cloud software has been a really nice uh, environment for us to share, share and discuss about the practices. We have been sharing openly our information together, and that has been a tremendous asset for every one of us, actually. Something what we have been doing, for example, this is an example <coughs> of information management. Information management uh, used to work in a way that uh, was was a kind of a little bit isolated tower or something and they kind of first faced the information management systems and then rest of the people were able were had to adapt to those systems quite much in a way. They have changed totally the entire way of working. They started to work in an iterative manner. They every day go through what are the kind of challenges that they are seeing in a daily basis. They work openly together with the people of EB. They also have their roadmap, what things would, would be possible in the future, which are aligned with the strategy, and we can see in the beforehand already and com also comment to that. And as a result, there has been that, for example, productivity of our information management has, sta has stayed pretty dramatically. And the, like, like the costs have been improving more than 30%, and we are having much better outcomes from that. There's something, for example, related to product. This is an example of our test tool product line. The, in two, three years ago, they had new product which they were launching, and which was not in time. It was not having the features they had in it. It was not, uh, uh, the cost uh, exceeded quite a bit and the features what were targeted for the customers were not in place. They were able to do uh, last uh, May and last September 2012 product launches which were on time, on schedule, more features than what was originally planned. And it was because of these methods which we were using. So there's really much, but it takes time, it's not an instant. When we are coming to work and accelerating even this in the future, so you have to prepare the whole company and everything to be able to tackle it when there comes a need for this. Some examples of the improvement. Uh, customer satisfaction is something what we have been looking after a long, long time, but uh, we have hundreds of different kind of measurement points. So for that perspective, like during the last three years, it 
because we really hear the positive trends, the various that you go less in this country. The second topic I would highlight is that uh, companies are satisfied, but all the people are satisfied. So we have some issues we are measuring up as feeling and spirit issues, and they have been really improved, <coughs> especially during the last two years. So there has been really something what has been. There's one area was few things we were measuring that they had, for example, glass burning. So nearly everything was positive. There was not even a negative part. But then I think the most of the things come also that the productivity improved. The people are liking this, and the customers are liking this, but then the productivity improvement. We have much less kind of organizational le levels, but this also forces us to kind of be much more collaborative, and we have much more knowledge to place where we work. It has increased our transparency. We can see each other's work, what, it, what we are doing, and the, the delivery of our literature. And these kind of practices, which are technical practices, got supported the Lean and Agile project by companies in the space, and this has been accessed uh, many years I think the benchmark in our company nowadays is Unix. So the first piece that it actually creates also the feedback side that, for example, we have some product areas which is, uh, are actually not bringing any new blood in a way because when they everything does, when they find those, they can actually correct those. <laughs> but it's not everywhere, so there's still work to do for that. And naturally, this has lead to that we are doing less sales. We are doing something which is much more kind of customer oriented, but also much more our strategy and continuous planning oriented. So that means also that we are doing less space. And those may have come up few words. So please, Janne, continue from the next one. Okay, thank you. So I will tell you uh, some obscure tales then. And uh, this infographic uh, illustrates uh, uh, the journey that we did last year. Um, starts with, with the challenge that we had when, uh, when we at F-Secure, we are a product company, so, so we, when we do new products, of course, uh, we think of very hard, okay, what does the customer want and, and so on. But, but, uh, it, it uh, led to a situation where, where we had these different groups <coughs> talking with each other, had good ideas, but also that uh, in the organization we had different layers, different silos, if you like, uh, to take these things forward. And, and then uh, when the actual product or feature hit the market, then uh, the customer was saying, this was not exactly what I wanted. So, so then we thought about, hey, there must be uh, some, some better way. And, and Last, last year we did a uh, company-wide uh, uh, initiative where we really took a hard look on, on how we create uh, the value for the customer, how, how do we create the products. And, and uh, it, it took us uh, five months with 40 persons and some, somebody calculated 3,000 hours. I don't know if it's correct or not. But we, we tried to uh, uh, come up with a new way where we uh, are more Customer focused. Uh, we uh, ask a lot of feedback in different stages of, of, of the work, so we don't kind of like go into the closet and then only come up with the end, end result. That, uh, for instance, our internet security had a, uh, every two weeks comes a new new beta version release for our customers, and we can get feedback of that. Also, we made the teams more cross-functional. They're representing uh, different layers of the company and, and they're thinking about the, the value we are creating for the customer, not just for their, from their own, own uh, functional perspective. So uh, we believe that this uh, uh, way of working uh, resulted in, in, in uh, us creating better products and also understanding our customers better. And uh, well, as a, uh, I don't know if it was a, resulting from this, but we also underwent uh, 
organizational change in, in, in the company where we uh, went from the functional organization to a more business-like organization. So what we uh, say these days that, okay, it's, it's great people making great products uh, and, and uh, it starts with the uh, leadership. You have to be able to show, show the vision and the leadership for, for your people. And then also uh, when we talk about ideas and innovations, I mean, th there's a lot of, I think there's not, not a shortage of ideas as such, but the innovation come uh, first after you, the customer has embraced them. So, so too often uh, we see that, that, that uh, everywhere that the ideas are lost or not, or not taken all the way through to the customers. So you have to have the capability and ability to bring in these ideas to, to the customers. And on a practical level, we, 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 had, we saw that, that uh, you need to be able to look at your uh, working environment as well. So, so uh, everybody talks about how, how often you have too many meetings and uh, too many of this or that. So, so why not change that? So why not uh, work, work in an organization where you can, you can discuss with your, your peers and, and meet them uh, wherever they are and, and, and at, at this time create the kind of environment that's most productive for you. And, and uh, finally, uh, to make great product, you have to have a great passion. So, so this is uh, repeats all over and all over again. So, you, so with, with great product, you see that what kind of passion went into this and, and brings this, uh, let's say, emotional response from, from the customers and consumers. So, so it's not just the technology, but, but uh, what's, what's inside there. And uh, I mentioned that we uh, underwent through this uh, organizational change. So, so it, it's about uh, changing the structure, but, but uh, that's, that's just the start. So, so you can have uh, goals and, and measure those goals, but, but so that's only, only the beginning. And, and the, the way we see it, that you have to really understand who are your customers, why our products might be good for them. So and, and yeah, I think this is a good uh, asset set also in your organization. Ask, ask your people, why do you think our product or services are good for the customers? Why certain cu customers choose our product? And how come some do not choose this? Unless you understand this relationship, I think it's, it's very difficult to, to make, make great products. And uh, of course, this, this uh, has to be somehow inbuilt into the people, people's backbone. So, so whenever they think about the value they are, they are creating, they think about the customers, they think about the products there are. This has to, all has to come, come together in order for, for your organization to really be successful in, in the global market. And, and this is where we at, at, at least are aiming, aiming to be. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, no, anything? Okay. Anything to ask or comment? Okay, I would like to ask uh, to, to start it. Yes, please. <laughs> Don't throw me. Thanks. Uh, referring to what Ken Duvado said about uh, the importance of, of for teaching or training people for, for for the future's new things. So is this change, is it just doing or does it involve training, education, whatever, to, to let the people to learn something about the future or futures, not only do things? What do you say? Uh, I think it's a, there's a lot of dif different kind of topics. You have to do it together. So just to come a few slides back and a few animations back if there is possibility to make it that. So the things are done together with the people. So naturally you have to go through a lot of issues with the people. So, so this is just the issue. There has been a lot of different kind of 
training sessions, a lot of different kind of discussion sessions, for example, during the, during the uh, cloud, cloud uh, software process, I think there has been more than 100 people just trained for the Scrum. And Scrum is, is used as a master's, master's inside our company, but there has been a lot of different kind of sessions because culture and people do that together and it's changed together. That it would be my stake at least. Yeah, uh, I completely agree, and, and, and I would add that uh, when an organization really wants to transform to something something new, it, it has to also undergo uh, investigation of, of its values and, and its culture. So this is a, some uh, this is and this is not something that that uh, can be just given from from the top. It has to. Uh, involve some, some active dialogue between the people uh, and, and only after that I see that uh, it is possible to go go to some, some new place. When, 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 and, but after that it could be that it makes life simple. You always know that, hey, we don't know what to do in this situation. There's no process or something. But, but then, hey, let's do this because this is why, why we are, are efficient, efficient why, why we do it always like this. Have, have to come to the to the uh, minds of the people, and they have to kind of like internalize what 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 is it all about, that why why they are in, in this organization. So, so I think that there's a lot of collaboration and a lot of dialogue that is needed to uh, change and be a real change. From Yari, thanks a lot, guys. So, thank you. You are free to go. So let's uh, have uh, the last but not the least presentation. It's uh, given by Carl Whiteman and it's very interesting and important because it's uh, on, on business development uh, related to this, this of these emerging data centers. So how to make business out of, of uh, the clusters or, or ecosystems or networks that are are part of this, this emerging uh, data intensive uh, era of, of information processing. So please go ahead. Just testing microphone okay? Everyone hear me? Okay, it's not likely to be an equipment failure, it's likely to be a human failure today. So my apologies to my voice and lack of energy, but I'm gonna try and raise above being the last person winning the graveyard shift the last appointment when you're all sitting there heavy in your seats, you've had a death by PowerPoint, and I've only got, don't worry, 35 slides for you. <laughs> so no, Let, let's, let's be absolutely clear, everybody has used phrases like uh, ecosystem, business case. Uh, throughout the day, I've been lucky enough to join also the streaming today and watch and heard some of the messages, and I think everybody has some dis different understanding in their own context, what they mean about ecosystem, business case. In every different context, somebody has a different meaning. So what I'm gonna show you is what we've done in very concrete terms in this region. I think you're gonna get a feeling for how determined we are and how we mean business and actually how proud of, uh, we are of where we are so far, but also there's a lot of work to be done um, so, if I could start, I need a box, there we go. How large that says, we probably need that one. There, okay. So, just very quickly, um, some about 2008, a decision was made in this region to start to look at attracting FDI and coordinating foreign direct investment. I picked up that responsibility, and this was a, a general coming together of strategy, um, many parties, many actors, real core parties ready to do hard work, regional uh, government, um, cities, the Kuntas, the, the cities that make up the region, uh, the University of Applied Science here, everybody getting together and realizing we have to make an influence change and it can't all be done with finished money, time <coughs> after time after time again, public money, no business case. So we realized we had to change something. First target, tourism. <coughs> not so successful, not my greatest moment. However, we developed a strategy and it was tough. It has been tough. 
the, the global situation in tourism and, uh, and in real estate investment, for example, has been incredibly challenging. So it was tough and it didn't kick off well. Although our strategy was quite right, the world wasn't cooperating with our strategy. I think there are businesses in here that have felt like that sometimes. Instantly, I have this bankruptcy qualification, if anyone's wondering. Because in America, apparently, you've got to have 12 or 13 before anyone will listen to you. So I've been there, I've been kicked hard, and I'm actually trying to fight back, and I'm in a good place because people here are fighting back. Tourism, we learned a lesson. Then we thought, oh, there's some opportunities out there. Let's take this strategy, let's take the strategy that someone outside is telling us seems to be pretty good, and let's try and transfer it across, because we've just had a dilemma here. Our paper mill is closing. We need to do something with it. So very quickly, we looked at it, we appraised it, we developed a strategy, and to be absolutely frank, we stuck with it. We stuck with it despite, despite it looking quite bizarre, that this little place, Kayani, that for many years, or Kainal for many years, has re relied on roadways, and how many flights a day are there to Helsinki with Finnair, this week, or have they cancelled them? We were relying on that access to market. It was road, hard, long, nine hours, six hours, got a little bit better in the summer when you can dodge the speed cameras around Kuopio. Sometimes. So, so it, it, it gave us the opportunity to realise suddenly we weren't as peripheral as we thought we were. We were now connected. And people are asking us questions and telling us, latency, you've got no chance. But you guys in the room, you cloud people, you've helped us a lot because you're changing the world and you're making us connected and you're giving us access to market. And there are big players out there who absolutely know when you bring all the elements that are here in Kainal together, there's a strength. So first of all, we had to pin what is the infrastructure to build a cluster. The infrastructure has to be defined, what segments we have a competitive advantage, develop a team of smart people willing to work hard that are going to work on it. We did that and we had to win an anchor case. The Finnish government made a good decision. Thank you very much, anyone from the government here. Hopefully we'll make more good decisions relating to Kayani in the future because TCO is what matters, competency is what matters, and it's happening here. And our learning curve has been incredible. And the business cases, step by step, have grown towards this one here, it's very important. Herman IT, a local company owned by the local telco, outright. If we look at Google in Hamina, big case, big investor, comes in, builds a wall, and grows, and starts to grow. But built a wall, it's a campus, it's inside the wall. Anybody been there? Has anybody in this room been inside there? I haven't. That's cooperation, collaboration, growth together. Build a wall. Us and them, David Campton, good book. As soon as you build a wall, you've got two sides. They start to wonder what's going on. Are they plotting to knock the wall down and kill me? So we knew we had to integrate a local company here. And it took some bravery from local people here to do to step up to the plate, to invest themselves in a mechanism, a colo company, and we needed then as a cluster to help win the first anchor case. We did that. We won an amazingly good anchor case with an amazing partner who is very active here and immediately joined hands with our university and started developing an education program, part of IBM Spectre, which is really pushing towards the edge and taking people that are systems administrators and really topping up their knowledge so that they are incredibly employable in this industry. Just an example of collaboration and getting it right and seeing the growth. There's more coming. There are NDA cases right now happening, but what I can say to you, our development so far has put us on the planet in a big way. Kayani Kainal is known in the big cities in the US. It's known in Mos Moscow and St. Petersburg. Who would have thought it? If we go back now to that moment where the paper mill was closing, who would have thought that we would have actually been on people's tables? Well, we are, and cloud is changing the world, and you're part of that, and it's our responsibility to make sure 
We don't sleep while it's happening. We understand our competitive advantages. We build on them. We grow our knowledge in this area. And we're doing that right now. Now, my apologies to the engineers in here. I have a couple of engineers in our team that really get upset with me using this kind of simple, old-fashioned slide where infra as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. And they come to me and they say, Carl, it's not quite like that. You have to understand. It's a good phrase for an engineer to use to a salesman. You have to understand. Because when you say that, you just get a smile back. So try it, try it next time. So what I'm trying to say in the most simple terms, and this is a simple slide, is if you want to build a data center, you need a few quid in your pocket, a few euros, to build some infrastructure. You do need a few quid. It's quite expensive to build a data center. You actually need, uh, well, some switch gear and some connection to the national grid. Power station would be nice. That costs a few quid. You do need it, otherwise you just plug to the grid and you don't really know what the quality of your power is. And this is the finished grid, which is a quality grid. But we're lucky here, because for 100 years, somebody's been invested in infrastructure here, in power, resilient, reliable, quality power infrastructure. And they haven't just been investing in it, they've been understanding it. They've been understanding do you need to build an aircraft with four ring wings? Well, if you're an engineer, you might want to. You might want to engineer. This is a fight, isn't it? Salesmen versus engineers. But at least you're awake now. So, what I'm with the blue line, with, with the blue here, what I'm trying to say is in, in kind of when we were in this situation, we, we were up to about here in the data center world. And as I just said, the capex is really heavy down here. If you're building a data center, you need some money to build this kind of power infrastructure. And the money is up there, up the top, the ROI is up there. It's why you guys are in the business that you're in. It's definitely there. But we had this, and we needed to win our first cases here, so we had some platform here. We had some data centers. We were really taking advantage of it. We start now to build critical mass. The critical mass is what we need to continue to grow. As everyone will know, in a business case, in a company here, you're driving towards organic growth through critical mass. It's one of the factors. It's also a disaster area if you fall asleep and, and take your eye off the ball. We've seen a few examples of that recently. So we've come up higher here. This is where we'd like to be. And I'm also going to show you why it does make sense to cite this in the same place. Because I know, I've just told you, it doesn't matter that we're out here North of, a little bit north of Helsinki, because we've now got fiber connecting us and we've now got, but, but I'm also saying there are advantages here of bringing your infrastructure, bringing your operations, bringing your work here too. Some of it, not all of it. Incidentally, sorry, I'll go back one slide. I mentioned over on the right hand side, again, Slutter. This is the, a lot of work, and I mean hard work, that the local university has been doing, the University of Applied Science, has been working here, building a reputation in, in the gaming industry. Now, the reason I raise this, I, I'm responsible for two part, two hats, foreign direct investment into this area, IT tourism. Second hat, building the cluster in the IT service sector. So what we've really done is brought the two together because there are absolute commonalities. You don't grow without investment, and we can't continue to sustain only public investment. So we've kind of brought the two cases together, find out what the alignments are, and we're definitely seeing advantages of that. Because when you place those two things together, there is something unique there about Kayani. It's a reality. And if you ask here, what is the strength, this, this pop-up line, this strength is we now have an output of people, some of whom are, are over at the hackathon at the moment in Kapingvolta. We have an output of young, positive people here who want to get engaged in the gaming business, understanding the business case, understanding the technology case. And if you ask somebody in Helsinki, is Kayani on the map in terms of gaming, they'll say yes. So we're in one of those sort of hotspots where this is growing. And there are others. 
But if I look at this area, what is that blue line? Well, that blue water level is the talent and the infrastructure that we've started to build through as these courses are kicking out now students. We need to retain them here. We need to give them a reason to stay here, and we need to find a business case for them, and we need to give them platform to work on, and we need to help them get through to the point where they can produce a better ROI for investment. We're working on it, and it's part of our strategy. Just very quickly, site selection is something I want to talk about, and before I do that, let's just look what's open. I, I think it's a pleasure. Anybody who's going to go and see the boxes and stand in the cold room may not feel it's a pleasure, but I think it's a pleasure to see this for real and know it's happening, because when I'm travelling around the world and I'm talking to investors in data centre business, I know one of the things they're sick to death of now is computer graphics and concepts and promises that there will be electrical infrastructure. And one of the great beauties of standing there is it's real. It's real. And it was on time and it was in budget. And that's because <coughs> CSC did a good job. And that's because the place was right for it and the selection was right. So it's real. And I think from an investor's point of view, I can also tell you of some of these real top companies that have seen this site, not one has had anything other uh, than what was said earlier, the wow factor. Not one has reacted in any other way than wow. So you need to see it to believe it, and I'm glad you're going in to see it. Uh, but there's more open, I'll come back. There's the HIT's data centre, which is open there. And you'll see there's also some rather sexy data centre space sitting there ready to go four tonnes per square metre floor loading, so it's no problem for me to walk across that large space there and, and admire the future data centre. But, you know, in terms of having vision when you're standing in there, this is Kayani. This is Kayani. Two data centres are open in 2009. Not one of you would have believed they would have been. I don't believe anyone would have believed two data centres would be open and there are more coming. So, opportunities, green land, uh, greenfield sites, brownfield sites, why? Why are we on these people's tables? Why are we in the late stages of site selection? Because we are, why? Well, there are lots of theories because I, I think companies set, uh, partic particularly public uh, uh, companies, they, they set their strategy and you kind of, if you're selling something to them, you kind of have to bomb their strategy. You've got to bombard yourself onto their strategy because, you know, you can't, you can't change their strategy. They have to go to their shareholders or their, they have to change their strategy first. So you've kind of got to find how you fit their business case. That was, ex that was essential for us at the beginning. We had to understand what was our competitive advantage and that meant segmenting very carefully segmenting not just the money, but the company and the modus operandi. For example, Digital Realty Trust. They have a REIT, it's a, um, it's a real estate trust model. And there were certain advantages for this site that required, or were advantage if you took, for example, uh, a leasehold, which didn't fit a REIT. It just did not fit. So we had to rule out that, yes, we'd like to see someone like that here. They're a heavy consumer of power but just their business model wouldn't fit the particular profile we have there. So we did a lot of work on segmentation and we started holding hands and we started communicating. But we did it at very high level and the response you tend to get, it's very hard to find out a company's real requirements until you have something they want or until they go into implementation phase. Site selection responses tend to be, okay, we've got it, Carl, we understand your site. If anything is going to be worth talking about, we'll call you, don't call us. Now, in business, have we had that response a bit before? I think we know that response, and there are a few ways you can deal with it. You can be a complete pain, or you can feel confident that your work was right, you got the right message over, and when their strategy is right, because you have a good business case, they will contact you because what's in it for them? Something is in it for them, they will contact you. So we did a combination of both. We were both irritating and we both trusted in our business case. So what was it? 
what was the, what was our business case? Well, let's start with the, those players who are looking at big cloud investment. How am I doing? Okay, thank you. So, big players looking at cloud in investment. What what were their TCO inputs? Okay, difference. TCO input three boxes. Due diligence criteria four hundred ticks or crosses. Does anybody get what I'm saying? The only thing these business case guys are looking at are the three TCO inputs. How much is the energy? How much does it cost to put the infrastructure in to get that energy? <coughs> and right at the bottom, how much does it cost to build this damn thing? Three boxes. On the right hand side, is it near, near a nuclear testing zone? Does it have a railway station that goes through the middle of the data center? Are there any mad terrorists? Well, you know, these kind of questions. Yes, I am, there are. But existing infrastructure, 100 years of work, we kind of, we kind of know how to do power here. Hydropower, biomass power, dotted all around us. We also know how to kind of analyze how we invest, what the capex decisions are, investing in that power infrastructure. This is a big one. Because in cloud business, where is, your uh, where is your redundancy? Is it in a different site? Or is it in a diesel generator? Slightly different ball game than co-location. So if you're able to understand exactly how your power infrastructure looks and how robust it is, it helps you understand what investment decisions you're going to make, what capex decisions you're going to make right at the beginning when you're building the data center. And if you look someone straight in the eyes who's driven by TCO, making the right buying decisions at the beginning, you'll get straight eye contact back if you help them honestly to do that. And we've got a lot of experience in doing that, and we've got a lot that we can take from the nuclear industry, the paper industry, in systematic risk analysis. We did that, and we made sure we identified with the potential investors who are looking at sites who value exactly those questions. And now I'm just looking at one of our value chains, and now we have also some very, including CSC, we have some absolutely state-of-the-art, high-tech data centers open, benefiting from that underpinning of infrastructure, from that power infrastructure. And yes, one value chain, we're looking at delivering services through here, through local businesses. One value chain, taking all the benefit all the way up from the beginning, driving up through to the customer. That's why we'd like to see you here, at all levels of the pyramid, because the infrastructure is strong, the knowledge is growing, the case Kayani is strong, we've got know-how that has grown in a very short period to a good level, but we never stop learning and we are not going to get defeated, we're going to win these cases and keep winning them. My job is to make sure we support all teams of that. Very quickly, I've kind of covered most of this, but in the old days, latency was a big thing, server hugging was a big thing, power price wasn't so big, it is now. And over on the right, right hand side here, Ignore that number, and in fact, ignore all these numbers, but some good news about corporate tax wasn't there. Yep, nice stuff, nice changes coming down to 20%. That made me feel good. Some, some possible big changes on power taxation that have gone off to the EU for ratification. Look, we're in the game. Kayani, other cases, other sites in Finland, we're in the game. But the key here is not to blanket this. It's to understand what segments are we really in the game and really press home our advantage in those, and here are some of them. Lastly, one new one we've just picked out, co-location. It's quite clear our local company here has big demand from Moscow and St. Petersburg. We're on it right now. We have RFIs in our pocket. We have so many RFIs, we're stressed resource-wise to respond to them. There is a demand. We're in the right place. We have the we have the background to do it. We started with EU money. We won our anchor tenant. We started to grow to our next business case. Our local businesses, several sitting in the room, are enjoying it. We want more jobs. We're going to try and drive them. Our membership of the Green Grid has given
given us global notoriety. We are the only data center cluster who are members of the, hey, I'm getting to a crescendo here, it's the end of the day, two minutes late, it's worth it, it's worth waiting. And little companies like Nokia Siemens and companies like that, they're also general members. Kayani DC cluster is a contributory member. Why? Because there's something here that's of interest to these big players. They're engaged with us right now, they want to hear about it, and they are engaged with us in every way. This is not a story, this is not a computer simulation, it's real. This is our partnerships model. We are trying to take business from one end to the other. We're not perfect, but we're doing our best. Thank you, enjoy your visit. It was brilliant to see you back in Kayani, thank you. Thanks a lot, Carl. That I would call an enthusiastic uh, speech. Hey, uh, thank you all for uh, this closing session. And uh, before we go on, uh, Tua asked me to, to inform that there will be two buses around. So they are waiting for us. So take your belongings and let's rush to the buses. And then one of the buses is leaving to the airport from the data center, and the other one is coming back to here. So make your choice uh, after we have finished the event at the data center. Thanks a lot.